Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at how replacing x with x multiplied or divided by a number, or y with y multiplied or divided by a number in the equation of a function causes a horizontal or vertical expansion or compression in the graph of that function. In mathematics, when you talk about expansions or compressions, which some people refer to collectively as stretches, what you're talking about is a type of transformation where each x-coordinate or y-coordinate is multiplied by some common scale factor. Now, expansions and compressions can be vertical. There is a vertical expansion of that function. At that point, it's been expanded by a factor of three. It's three times as tall, or it could be compressed. Maybe I'll stop there, where it's been compressed vertically by a factor of one-fifth. It's one-fifth as tall, all the y values are one-fifth the height. Or you could have a horizontal expansion or compression. There's a horizontal expansion by a factor of two, and there's a horizontal compression by a factor of one-half. Now my function here, I have it so that the bottom left point is right at the origin there, but if I move this a little bit here, let's put it slightly more centrally here, and I'll move this function maybe so it's uh, somewhere, how about right about, let's say there, somewhere in there, like that. Now it's going to look a little different when you expand and compress, maybe possibly different than you might think here. If I expand that vertically, it doesn't expand from the bottom of the thing or the top of the thing, it expands from the x-axis. It's expanding from the x-axis or it's compressing from the x-axis, if you notice there. And the same goes when you do a horizontal expansion or compression. It's going to expand or compress from the y-axis in that case, if you notice there. First, we're going to look numerically and graphically at vertical expansions and compressions to gain a little bit more understanding as to what's going on. We're going to use a specific function here. That function is going to be our base function. So I've got it written down as y equals f of x here, but you could actually write the specific function out if you want, right? y equals 4 minus x squared. And then what we're going to do in both of these cases here is we're going to change f of x to 2 f of x and then we're also going to change it to 1 half f of x and so again you could write out the specific function for each of those as well in each of those cases y equals 2 and f of x is 4 minus x squared so you got to multiply the whole thing there and you could do the same for the second one there 1 half f of x is 1 half 4 minus x squared. So you fill out those tables of values just like anything else. Substitute these x values in and get some y values. In the interest of time, we're going to just have them pre-filled out here. So you have those three columns of y values after you substitute them in. And I have them highlighted because it's the y values that are different in this situation. If you think about it, when you substitute in all of these same x values, you're going to get for the first part of substituting it in this, right? You take the x value, square it, and subtract it from 4. You also do that in each of these other cases. It's just that you do that in here. But in this case, after you get those same values, you're going to multiply them by 2. So the values in this column are all double what the values are in here, the y values. And the same goes for this second one here, except that after you get those same y values here, when you calculate it, you're going to multiply it by a half. So these ones are all cut in half from what those are, if you look at them. All right. So when you change f of x to 2f of x, when you multiply the entire function by 2, the y values are all double. And when you multiply the entire function by 1 half, the y values are all cut in half. All the y values have been doubled in 2f of x and they have been cut in half, divided by 2, in 1 half f of x. Right? 
Now before we move on, we're going to do one last thing with these tables. We're going to look for invariant points. Now again, invariant points are points that don't change in a transformation. And when you look at the table, you can see that there's actually a couple of invariant points. That point doesn't change because it's the same. And this point doesn't change. Now if you think about it, it makes sense why those don't change. If what you're going to do here is you're going to calculate the values and the only difference here is you're going to double them or cut them in half. You're going to multiply them by two or multiply them by a half. If the y value that you get from this is zero, then it doesn't matter if you multiply it by two because it's going to still be zero. The points where y is zero are the ones that are invariant. So we can say negative two, zero, and two, zero are invariant. Or in other words, where y equals zero. Now we'll look at this graphically and see if we can make some further connections here as to what's going on. If you go ahead and graph the points in the tables of values for those three functions, you'll get the graphs of them. And in the interest of time, I have them already done there. So that's what you should get. And if you compare our base function to the first one we transformed there, you see the same thing that you see in the table in that all of the y values are doubled, right? Because of that two in front. So this point, for instance, this 0, 4 is now 0, 8. And say this point here, 1, 3 is now and said 1, 6. And the same on the other side here, right? Negative 1, 3 is now negative 1, 6. And then on the other side of the x-axis as well, right? 3, negative 5 is now instead 3, negative 10. Same on the other side here, right? Negative 3, negative 5 is negative 3, negative 10. All the y values have changed. They've been doubled. Similar with what's happening with this one. If you look at the y values there, the one right in the center here, 0, 4, has become 0, 2 in this case, got cut in half. And this one, 1, 3, is now instead 1, 1 and a half. Same on the other side, negative 1, 3 is now negative 1, 1 and a half. And the same below the axis here, right? 3, negative 5 is now instead 3, negative 2 and a half. And the same on the other side, right? That one has become negative 3, negative 2 and a half there. All right, so if you're going to describe what's happened there, y equals 2 times 4 minus x squared. That one has experienced a vertical expansion by a factor of 2. And the other one, y equals 1 half, 4 minus x squared. That has experienced a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. In both cases, the graph or the table, the y values have all been doubled or cut in half. And as you saw with the table, the invariant points are all the ones where y is 0 because if you're multiplying by 2 or 1 half, the points that are 0, multiplying doesn't matter. They stay at 0, so that's where the invariant points are. They're those ones that are on the axis there. So negative 2, 0 again, and 2, 0. Or in other words, again, where y equals 0. We're going to look next numerically and graphically at horizontal expansions and compressions. And for this, we're going to use the base function absolute value of x minus 2. And we're going to do a couple of things to it here. We're going to replace the x with 2x, and we're going to replace the x with 1 half x. So before we start calculating values, we'll write out the specific function for each of those. So if the base function is y equals absolute value of x minus 2, then the other two functions, the first one here, is y equals absolute value of, instead of x minus 2, as we said, we're going to replace that x with 2x. And in the second one here, y equals absolute value of not x minus 2. Again, we're going to replace that x with 1 half x. And then you can go ahead and calculate the values. Maybe before, you might be wondering, why are there different x values here? And you'll see shortly why that is. So you can calculate the values just by substituting them in. In the interest of time, I already have them here. And now that we have the y values here, we can make some sense of why I started with different 
x values in each case here. The reason is because if the first thing you're going to do, say in this function, is multiply by 2, then if you start with x values that are half as much, you'll get the same y values. right? Because if you take these things that are half as much, but then double them, and then do the rest of the calculations like you did over here, you end up with the same y values. And similarly, in this one over here, if the first thing you're going to do is multiply by a half, or in other words, divide by 2, then starting with x values that are double, you end up with the same y values. So if we're going to describe what's happened, all x values in uh, this one have been cut in half. Whereas in this one, they have been doubled. Now I should say what function that is, right? This is f of 1 half x, and the other one is the f of 2x. So you might be wondering here now, that seems weird. When you double the x value, the x values get cut in half, and when you cut the x value in half, when you replace it with a half x, the x values double. It's because if you're going to start before you do the calculations by doing those things, if you're going to start by doubling it, you got to start smaller. If you're going to start by cutting it in half, you got to start bigger. So it does the opposite of maybe what you think it's going to do. Now before we move forward, again here we're going to look at invariant points. So invariant points in this situation if you look down the table, again, it's ones that don't change, right? And if you look carefully at this, there's one that doesn't change. And that's the only one in the table that doesn't change. It's also the only one that has an x value of 0, right? Because if you're changing what you're multiplying by here, if you're going to multiply by 2, or you're going to leave it as x, or you're going to make it a half x, if the x value is 0, it doesn't matter what you multiply it by, it stays as 0, and you get the same y value that results. So there's only one invariant point there, and that is 0, 2, and that is where x equals 0. So to see what's going on here graphically, you can take the points from those tables of values and graph them. And if you do, you're going to get those three graphs. So we have our base function in red there, y equals absolute value of x minus 2, and then our other two transformed functions, the first of which we replaced x with 2x, and this might be a bit surprising that that one looks like it's been compressed horizontally, which it has, and you can kind of confirm that by just looking at some of the values here, right? Say, for instance, this point on the original function that is 2 is now... 1. X values gone from 2 to 1. And this one where the X values 6 up there, that has changed to 3. And this one over here, negative 2, is now negative 1. So that thing has experienced a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. And then similarly over here, this function, if you compare the values, again this value that's 2, is now 4 in our transformed function and say any other value here this one that's 4 is 8 and pick any other one you want there we'll do this one again here 6 is now 12 or a negative 1 right this one we had here let's do this one negative 1 is negative 2 it's they're all doubled all of the x values are doubled it has undergone a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2. Now earlier I said it might be a little surprising and the reason it's surprising is because it works maybe the opposite of what you might think because you often think well if you change x to 2x 2 is a big number and half is a small number so why is when you have the the big number gets smaller and the small number gets bigger well it's because of what we saw in the table as well when you replace x with 2x if the first thing you're gonna do is double the x values then the x values that you have have to be half as much in order to get the same y value out at the end. And if the first thing you're going to do is divide the x values by 2, then starting with x values that are twice as big gives you the same y values. So if we're going to describe what has happened here, the y equals absolute value of 2x minus 2 has undergone a horizontal compression by a factor of 
one half, and the other one, y equals absolute value of one half, x minus two, has undergone a horizontal expansion by a factor of two. We can just say that's all gonna be the same in there. If you want some abbreviations in there, I would abbreviate this one just as a horizontal compression times one half, and I would abbreviate the second one as horizontal expansion times two. All right, now before we move on, let's look at those invariant points again. The invariant points are again the points that don't change, and you can pretty clearly see in there, this right here on the axis, those are the points that don't change in this transformation. And again, that point, there's only one here, that point is zero, two, and the reason is because the x value is zero. This horizontal compression or expansion changes the x values, and if the x value is zero, if you're multiplying by two or multiplying by a half, if the original x value is zero, it's not gonna be any different. Multiplying anything by zero, it stays zero. So it's uh, where x equals zero in a horizontal expansion or compression. Next we have some graphs that have a base function, f of x, and a transformed function, g of x, and we're gonna do two things. We're gonna describe the transformation that's happened, and we're going to determine an equation for the transformed function. So in our first one here, if you look at it, the base function is here. This one is clearly much taller vertically, right? But it's not any wider. It's kind of the same width. And these points on here, just talking about invariant points, those two points haven't changed. Points on the x-axis not changing because that's where y is zero. This is clearly a vertical expansion. And if you look at it, say in the center is the easiest place to look. This point that is one above here is now five times as much, right? It's not that it's four more. So you don't say it's four times bigger. It's five times bigger. It was one and now it's five. Right, you can kind of do some estimation with other points there, but that's the easiest one to see. So we're gonna say that this has had a vertical expansion by a factor of five, and then that g of x, to get that to happen, we have to take f of x and multiply it by five, so I'll put a five in front of it there. In the second one here, maybe the first thing to notice is there's a couple of invariant points, points that aren't changing there. And so the width of this curve above is the same for both of them, but clearly the height is different. Now the original this time is taller than the transformed function. So this has clearly been a compression here. And so if we're looking at this, we're gonna say this has had a vertical compression. And to determine the scale factor, you look for some points that are sort of at whole number uh, or integer value so that we can compare. So the top is five, but then that one's a little hard to compare to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this one instead. That looks like a four there. And then this one, that same thing is one, right? So this one that was four above is now one above. And you can see the same thing below here. This thing that is four below is now one below there. So that thing has been vertically compressed by a factor of one quarter. And to get that to happen, you take your function f of x and you put a one quarter in front of it, one quarter f of x. We have two more here. And so in this case here, if you look at it, the width clearly looks different, but this height doesn't look different. And again, if you look for invariant points, that point that hasn't changed. And so that suggests to you that it's a horizontal expansion or compression, and you can tell that it's a compression because the thing was, uh, looks like 10 units wide there, and now it looks like five units wide, all right? And you can double check with the points, right? This point that was x value of five now looks like it's approximately 2.5 and so on, right? Or maybe it's easier to see here, this value that was four is now two, right, as you compare that. So this has been horizontally compressed by a factor of one half, and to get that to happen, we are gonna take the function, f of x, and to get a horizontal compression to happen, instead of x here, we're gonna replace that with two x. In our last one here, 
if you look at that one and compare some of the values here, this also looks like it's been horizontally changed. The fact that there's an invariant point on the y-axis there leads you to believe that since that's where x is zero, that's a horizontal change, just like this one had an invariant point on the axis there. So if you look at the points here, pick some nice number points like this point that's two, that point, the corresponding point to that one is this one, and that is six, right? So a two became a six, or this point here that's one, that's the corresponding point to that one, and that's three. This point that is three here, that one's three away, and now it's become nine away if you look at that one. So this one has been horizontally expanded by three, and so if you're writing an equation for that, to get a horizontal expansion to happen, I have to put a number smaller than this, right? If I want the x values to be tripled, I gotta divide in the equation here to get that to happen. All right, next we're gonna graph a few transformed functions given the graph of the original function. And if you look at the equations, this first one here has an a value here of five over two. Now you might think, oh, it's a fraction, so it must be a compression, but you have to look at the value of the fraction. That five over two, or in other words, 2.5, that a value of 2.5, a is greater than one there. And when it's greater than one, it is a vertical expansion, and in this case, by a factor of five over two, or 2.5. So what that means in terms of our graph is the x values aren't gonna change because there's nothing changed inside of here. It's just a vertical change, so the y values are gonna change. And we can just work with a few of the key points here and change those. So say on this first one on the left here, that has a y value of four, now it's gonna be 2.5 times as big. So 2.5 times four is 10, right? Four and eight, that's two times it, and another half of four is that. So it's at 10, that point is right there. And we can do the next one. This has the same value of four, so it's gonna be the same value of 10 up there. And we can do this one right here. That is a value of two, and 2.5 times that, right? Two times that is that, and another half gets you to there. So we have that point. And then the last one here, this one is three. If we do two and a half times that, two times that is six, and another half of three is another one and a half, so it's gonna to be to there. So we have all of those points. If you want, you can put this y-intercept. It has the same value as this, so it's gonna have the same value there. So if we go and graph that then, what we're gonna get is a graph that looks like that. So there's the graph of that function. You can kind of confirm that you've done things right just by double checking, right? The width is the same. You haven't changed the width at all because there's been no horizontal change. But the height of the thing, sort of the total height, from here to here, it's two in height. And from here to here, it's five in height. So the height has been multiplied by two and a half, which is what you would expect. Now, the other thing that you might find surprising is it looks like it's in a different place as well, right? Because sort of the bottom of the thing was there and now the bottom of the thing is up there. If the function is not touching the axis, there's no invariant points. So the expansion kind of also sort of moves it away. The distance, you know, this distance of two that it is away from the axis also expands and now it's five away, right? Everything about it changes. Let's look at the second one here. In the second one, we actually have a couple of things going on here. First of all, we're going to recognize that this change is inside the function here. We have, instead of x, we have negative 4x. And actually, that is going to cause two changes because, first of all, it's a negative number. And the fact that it's a negative number means that this is going to cause a horizontal reflection in the graph. So it's going to be flipped over like this when we draw it in a second. And then the other aspect here is the fact that the number part is four. So if we ignore the negative for a second, the number part is four. Or the more mathematical way to say that is the absolute value of that B value is four, which is greater than one, right? The fact that the absolute value of that B value is greater than one means that this is gonna experience a horizontal compression and it's gonna be by a 
factor of one quarter, the reciprocal of that B value, the reciprocal of four, one quarter. Remember that for horizontal expansions and compressions, it does the opposite of what you might think. So if we're going to draw that on the graph, we're going to use those same key points again and make the changes to that. And we're going to do both of those changes together. And these two changes, it actually doesn't matter what order you do them in. You're going to see more about that in a later video. But for now, because you can double check here, the fact that if we do those two things, if we do the compression first, horizontal compression of a quarter, that four turns into a one, so it's here. And then if we reflect it over to the other side here, it goes over there, it's there. If we did it in the other order first, so if we reflected it over and then put it there and then compressed it from four to one, you'd end up in that exact same place. So again, more on that later in a later video. So that point is there. You're gonna find that this point is two. So a quarter of that is one half. And then we flip it over, it's right there. And then these other two key points down here, this one, two, becomes a quarter of that, which is a half, flip it over, it's right there. Oops, erase that, that's right there. And then this last one here, this is four, so compress it down to a quarter and then flip it over, it's right there. So we have those four points. And if you join those four points, you're gonna get that the graph looks like this. And as I said in the first one, you can double check that you've done things correctly just by comparing the original and the final graph. If you look at the width of the original graph, it's eight and the width of this is two. That's a quarter as much. So you've compressed it the right amount. The height of both of them are two. So that hasn't changed, which is what you were going for, no vertical change. And the orientation of the thing has been reversed because if you look at it, this kind of horizontal part is gone from the left to the right and this kind of dip down and partially back up has gone from the right over to the left. So that looks good. Next we're going to look at writing an equation for a function where we're given the equation of a little bit more complicated function and then we've done some transformations to it. We've expanded it vertically by a factor of three and we've compressed it horizontally by a factor of one half. So in this first case, to get it to expand vertically by a factor of three, we need to uh, multiply f of x by three. I am gonna use g of x to represent my transformed function. So I'm gonna say, let g of x equal three times f of x. So in other words, what that is is three times that function up above there. So three x squared plus four x minus seven move that bracket over, save some space. So if you then just distribute it, do that to each of those three terms, you have nine X squared plus 12 X minus 21. To get it to vertically expand by three, if there's three terms like that, each of the three terms has to be multiplied by three. All right, now in this second one here, what we're doing again here is compressing horizontally by a factor of a half. That's the one where we're gonna to have to replace x. We're gonna to have to change x. That has to turn into 2x. If you want it to compress, you gotta do kind of the opposite of what this is, right? If you want it to compress, you gotta multiply x by two, replace x with 2x. So I am gonna use a different letter here. I'm gonna use h of x, and that's gonna be f of, instead of an x in there, we're gonna put 2x in there. And so if we write out the specific function for that, this is gonna be equal to three instead of just x squared i need to put in there two x and in my second term plus four instead of x i'm going to need to put in there two x every single x has to be replaced and then of course i still have the seven on the end there so if i'm going to simplify that this has to happen before i multiply by three so i'm going to write this as three times that's four x squared two x times two x is four x squared I might as well do this one now. Four times two X is eight X. Still have my minus seven, and then I can work that part of it out. And that's gonna be 12 X squared plus eight X minus seven. That's what my H of X is. So that is that. Again, you could always check your work if you have a graphing calculator or 
graphing app on your phone or computer or whatever, and you can just confirm that this one is three times, Y values are all three times as much, and here that all the X values are all half as much. Okay, so in summary here, expansions and compressions, or what some people refer to as stretches collectively, if you change the equation y equals f of x to the equation y equals a f of x, or in other words, if you multiply the function by some value, it undergoes a vertical expansion if that a value is greater than one. Now, to be specific here, what we need to do is we actually have to say the absolute value of a or the, just the number part of a, regardless of whether it was positive or negative. Because as you've seen here, if that value is negative, it's also gonna undergo a reflection, which we'll get to in a second here. So we do have to say absolute value of a, the number part of a is greater than one. So, or down here, if it's greater than one. And then similarly, you can say it's a vertical compression if the absolute value of a is less than one, less than one. All right, and as I said a moment ago, if a is negative, or in other words, if a is less than zero, then there's also a reflection. So in our picture up here, say this, this blue graph here, right? If that was a number bigger than one, which causes that expansion, if the absolute value is bigger than one, it's gonna cause an expansion. But if a itself is negative, then it would be also upside down like that, all right? So there's gonna be more about combining transformations in subsequent videos here, but for now we need to know that, all right? And then similarly here with horizontal changes, if you make the change from y equals f of x to y equals f of bx, in other words, if you multiply or divide x by something inside the function, replace x with bx, it experiences a horizontal expansion if the value of b, and we have to do the same thing here, absolute value of b is less than one. Now, this is the one where remember that for horizontal changes, it works the opposite of what you might think, right? If this is less than one, it undergoes an expansion. And if it's greater than one, it undergoes a compression. The horizontal changes, when you do something before you apply the function, it works the opposite. And then so similarly here, it's a horizontal compression if absolute value of B is greater than one. And then similarly here, uh, if it's also negative, the value of B, if you have a negative value of B, so again, if B is less than zero, there's also a reflection there, all right? And then lastly here, just in general, expansions, compressions of a function result in graphs where the size or shape or dimensions, those kind of things have changed while the orientation remains the same. So what that means is, like these upside down kind of triangular shaped functions were upside down, this doesn't turn them into being right side up or anything like that. If you also involve a reflection, yes, that can change the orientation, but an expansion or compression itself isn't gonna change the orientation. All right, that's it. Mm -hmm.